America, and welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, is there a Sharia threat to America? No. No, there's not. I guarantee you what you're going to learn tonight is uh, going to open your eyes a little bit. Uh, for instance, are we the American taxpayers actually funding terror? Probably. Probably. Are we unwittingly contributing to the destruction of our own constitution? Yeah. You know, what's amazing to me is that we have, um, we're good and decent people, and we try to, we try to be inclusive and try not to be hateful, and, but we're going to be remembered not as tolerant. We're going to be remembered as morons. We are taking our own country down. I showed you this before. This is a theory that as um, soon, as, soon as Tunisia happened on the 31st of uh, uh, January, I said, look out, Tunisia is going to be possibly the Archduke Ferdinand moment. Did anybody remember me saying that? Did you think I was... I mean, it sounded nuts at the time, didn't it? It sounded like, that kid's Tunisia, Glenn, relax. And now look how it is spread across. And I said it would cascade and sweep the Middle East and begin to destabilize Europe and the rest of the world. The Wall Street Journal reported this week that, um, that yes, indeed, radicals, Islamists, communists, and socialists are working together um, in the Middle East. Yes, I know that sounds crazy, but... It's starting to happen, and we know that it's happening in the West, and we know that it's happening here in America. There have been arrests of, of people who are funding terrorists or working with terrorists, and they're, uh, they're from the American left. But tonight I want to show you something else. Tonight I want to show you um, a little bit of, of Sharia and some of the laws that are being passed here in America and what we're doing to ourselves. Sharia, every faithful Muslim, um, is, is obligated to wage jihad. Now there's a couple of different, two kinds of jihad. There's the, hey, look at me, I'm not a threat, <laughs> jihad. And then there is the other jihad. The, the, the people will say that it's a, you know, the jihad of the soul. There's a stealth or civilization jihad. Um, the stealth or civilization jihad would be like the Muslim Brotherhood, although I contend that they're this one as well. We've shown you um, this guy before, Yusuf al Qaradawi. This guy is the spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. al Qaradawi is rated the ninth most powerful Muslim on earth. And you might remember some of the lovely things he had to say about the Jewish people. <laughs> But remember, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, they're, they're, they're changed. They're not like that anymore, even though he's still their spiritual leader. There's something else that he has said that we haven't told you about yet on this program. He said it in 2006. He was talking to the BBC about charity in the Islamic culture. That's called zakat. Now, here are his exact words on the subject. Quote, I don't like this word, donations. I like to call it jihad with money, because God has ordered us to fight our enemies with our lives and our money. Jihad with money. That's where we'd like to start tonight. Jihad doesn't always come in the form of a suicide vest or a plane being flown into buildings. There are also jihadists who are working to destroy America from within through the economy and through other avenues like infiltrating the justice system or the media, Congress, American culture. It is game on. Financial jihad is being waged at this very moment against the United States and across the globe to the tune of one trillion dollars. If you've ever heard the term Sharia compliant banking or Sharia compliant products, well, let's get into that a little bit. Sharia compliant banking or finance is the practice of ensuring that all monetary matters are in full compliance with all aspects of Islamic law. Transactions must not involve products like pork or alcohol. They have to avoid interest and other things. But Sharia banking also involves charity or zakat. Remember what we just heard from Zara Kawi. He likes to call zakat jihad with money. Why? Well, 
Sharia requires Muslims to tie the percentage of money to charity. So Sharia compliant banks and mutual funds are ultimately tithing to charity. Okay, this sounds fine so far, right? But which charities are the monies going to? Charities like Hamas or Hezbollah? Well, that's up to the Sharia banking advisors. Who is an advisor on, for the banks? Well, there was a bank called uh, Bank Al Taqwa. You're not going to believe who the advisor was. This guy. That was shut down by the Treasury Department for funding terror groups. Who would have seen that coming? Well, are there any other obvious points that maybe we're turning our head to? Islamic banking has entered the United States and other Western nations thanks to banks like Citigroup, HS, uh, HSBC, Barclays, Deutsche Bank, and others. It's not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself until you get down to the Sharia compliant officers. Now, there's one other thing. Are we as a nation the owners of the largest purveyor of Sharia compliant insurance products in the world? Yes, we are. In fact, we bought the company as taxpayers, AIG. The U.S. government took it over in 2008. I want to introduce you to a couple of people. First is Chris Holton. He's the vice president for the, uh, at the Center for uh, Security Policy. His organization published a book called Sharia, The Threat to America. Holton is also the editor of shariafinancewatch.org. And Daniel Pipes, he is the founder of the Middle East Forum, a visiting fellow at the Hoover Institute and author of Militant Islam Reaches America. Great to have you both. Let me start first, Chris, with you, because Daniel, you really, you watch over um, Sharia and your expertise really is finance, correct, Chris? Sure. Okay, so first of all, do I have it all right? Yes, sir. The only thing that I could see that you might have left out is the fact that Iran actually dominates Sharia compliant finance in the world. But this isn't necessarily uh, nefarious, right? I mean, you could be a sh Sharia compliant and not necessarily nefarious, right? Do you true. agree with that? That's true. Okay, so why is, why is Sharia compliance well, something we should worry about? Well, first of all, the whole purpose of Sharia compliant finance is to promote Sharia. And promoting Sharia is something that we should not have here in America because Sharia is the enemy threat doctrine. It is the goal of groups like Al Qaeda, Hezbollah, and Hamas. Uh, it is antithetical to everything that's in our Constitution. And in fact, in my opinion, it is the biggest threat uh, to our constitutional rights uh, over the next 25 years you, in this country. Would you agree with that, Daniel? Well, there are different kinds of threats. I mean, China is one kind of threat and Sharia is another kind of threat, but it is certainly a very important threat. I mean, a behead you kind of threat. I mean, I, I think, it, do, do we all not agree that if America fails because we're lazy or we just can't get our act together, and somebody else beats us in fair competition. Anybody have a problem with that? No. Yeah, no, I mean, that's our fault. We're sloppy and lazy. Um, but um, the threat of someone coming in, and, you know, we have our own problems with our own radicals here in America that are trying to do this, and overthrow something, that's a whole different topic. Um, Chris, help me out on the Sharia-compliant officers. Um, how, how are these guys picked? Well, there's not many Sharia scholars in the world. Uh, there's probably only about 200 or so who sit on Sharia advisory boards of Sharia compliant financial institutions. Well, you've got two of the superstars of Sharia advisory up there. Uh, there's Taki Usmani, who is a former uh, Supreme Court Justice from Pakistan, and of course there's Yusuf al Qaradawi, who is the foremost Sharia scholar in the in the uh, Sunni Sharia. How much world. money do these guys control? Just these two? Well, uh, billions of dollars, uh, and they themselves sit on multiple boards. Probably get paid fifty thousand bucks for each board that they sit on. Um, so uh, they enrich themselves. Yusuf al Qaradawi, he is a guy who is at a Muslim uh, university or something here in America, or he sits on a board here in America, right? Still, do you know what I'm talking about, Daniel? Uh, do you, Chris? Yes. What is it? I Islamic American University. He, f he was a founder, and he is the chairman uh, 
of the Board of Trustees, but he has to do it in absentia because he's forbidden from traveling to America because of his ties to terrorist groups. How, how is that happening, Daniel? I mean, what are we doing here? I mean, how, how, are we, how do we have a guy who is, um, I mean, do you think he's a threat to America? Yusuf Akardawi is a threat. Yes. Yeah. So he, how, how do we not know this stuff? Well, he is forbidden from coming in the country, and it actually wasn't so much terrorist, uh, ties to terrorism as it was the substance of a book he wrote that uh, the U.S. government found offensive and he was not allowed in and has not been here for decades, if ever. Right. But are you saying he's not, um, his influence is it felt here? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the government is bifurcated. There are some in the government who understand who he is and want to keep him out, and there are others who think that he is the solution to al-Qaeda and the Taliban, that this kind of moderate Islamism, uh, this nonviolent Islamism, is the solution. Can I, may I just ask a question? Who thinks that, you know, hey, a few people like the Nazis, uh, even though they inflated the numbers, you know, killing the Jews is nonviolent. Who, I mean, is there anybody here who thinks that just the clips you've heard is nonviolent? How is, how, how is anyone thinking he's nonviolent? There were Nazis who were nonviolent themselves. They were part of, obviously, very, very violent machinery. But, but I, they're the but they're Nazis. And the banks. Exactly. And that's the point here. We're agreeing that these so-called moderate Islamists are, in fact, part of the same machinery to apply the same Sharia that leads to the same domination of the world. Okay. Hey, hey. But they themselves are not violent. And but, so they get but wait, 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 wait. I, I, I've never said um, as a spiritual leader or as a human being or, uh, you know, any time that I can think of, hey, by the way, I'm just praying, and seriously mean it, I'm just praying that God is going to give me uh, the strength to shoot Jews from my wheelchair. Who, who is defining him as moderate? U.S. government, by and large, sees the Muslim Brotherhood as moderate. In other words, it's not Taliban. It's not out there planning and plotting. Chris, help me. What's, what's, what, what, what's worse? He's that absolutely makes right. The, the, the left in this country also uh, seems to have a romantic view of the Muslim Brotherhood as well. No, uh, I know that, but I've never heard this before. I mean, I know that they're all in denial of the Muslim Brotherhood, but I just thought they shred, you know, they, they shed the, what was it Van Jones says, uh, uh, sh uh, shed the radical pose for the radical ends. But the, he's more radical than what he's saying? There, is there somebody more radical than what he's saying there? I mean, that's pretty radical.